That's it. World's fastest stealth jet. It was one of the first of the stealth technology, I believe. Although it may have actually preceded even that science military project. The whole stealth technology groups uses the uh, curved slanted edge planes rather than straight edges or uh, perpendicular hard edges that reflect radar better. This bounces radar away and off in other directions and then the flat black color also helps, absorbs it rather than bounces it off. No or less reflection. Supposedly the plane's exterior would get so hot while flying that in order to allow the fuel tanks to have a little bit of stretching room they actually had to be put together somewhat loosely so much so that during takeoff it would be leaking fuel and only once it got up into cruising speed that it heat up enough to expand the tanks that it would stop leaking and they'd probably I guess refuel in air or fully fuel in air in flight and let's see what else we can find out here this is the rear of the plane looking at the engines and to give you a little more idea of what a low profile it had see how flat it is side to side it's a fairly large plane and yet it's so skinny this also would tend to make it less detectable it's not like coming right at you or going away from you there was just very little there that the radar would bounce off of which send back to the radar receiving stations at the Richmond International Airport here we are again and it's the SR-71 I called it by the wrong name <laughs> SR-70 it's only one point off but there again from this other side you can see how slim the profile is it's just not a whole lot there that's going to reflect are back to the enemy trying to spot him and then here we've got a jet I believe it may be the Tomcat should be the uh, F-15 we'll get around to the side there and check on him real quick <laughs> that's the F-15 Tomcat is that right Navy. They fly those off of aircraft carriers, or used to. Is it still in commission? I don't think it is. Anymore. Right, right. A few years ago, this was the backbone, though. Amazing technology. Here we are looking straight at one of the engines. The right up board on it says that this point that sticks out ahead of the engine actually breaks the supersonics moving air down to a slower rate that the engines can use. Now that little red ring probably is not there in flight. <laughs> But uh, the point helps the air slow down enough to where the engines can use it. And uh, let's see, it actually says the prone spikes in front of the engines transform the supersonic airflow entering the intakes into subsonic 
airflow that the engines can utilize, basically meaning it takes it from being faster than the speed of sound to being a little less than the speed of sound, the engines can then use it. At operational altitudes, the engines produce only 17% of the total thrust. The shock wave behind the spikes establishes an area of pressure that actually pushes the engines, producing an additional 58% of the total thrust. So the shock wave, <laughs> once it gets going, it creates a shock wave that actually does a lot of the pushing, 58% of the thrust. And the ejectors surrounding the nostrils near the afterburners produce the remaining 25% of the total thrust. In full afterburner, each engine produces more horsepower than the ocean liner Queen Mary produced. When these babies are cooking, each one produced an equivalent horsepower, more horsepower than the ocean liner Queen Mary. It's just a sick looking plane. Look at that edge on it. And it's the SR-71 Blackbird. Aircraft set an endurance record April 26, 1971. Where it flew over 15,000 miles in 10 hours and 30 minutes non-stop. Time included aerial refueling at subsonic speed, so it would drop down to less than the speed of sound, refuel and continue flying. It says there, rescue canopy jettison. Number one, push button to open door. Number two, pull T handle out nine feet. Reckon if you can pull the T handle out nine feet, you're already outside the airplane. <laughs> no, it's got a lot of little odd little markings on it. All right, let's take a head on look at this baby. That's a very tip. getting a kind of weird foreshortened view of it but that's what it looks like coming at you so it really just doesn't have much two little circles on either side where the engines are and a little blob in the middle hard to see that radar doesn't want to see it yeah, the shadow of it, you kind of see the shape of the front going back and this is the F-15 Tomcat. Air Force had a version, I believe it was F-14. Well, the Air Force had the F-15 and the Navy had the F-15 or 14. I forget. Uh, this is the Navy version. Had fold-up wings, I believe. <laughs> Although both may have used that, the slip back wings for the aircraft carrier use that could be folded away to make more space and just looking at the back end of the uh, Tomcat here just not a lot for a missile to hit although those engines are pretty big it's all real sloping slanted sort of surfaces so that it would not be easy to target not much there to hit low profile again small profile and here we have some models <laughs> I used to love putting together airplane models when I was growing up apparently there are different versions here not sure what the differences are that one's got a piggyback on it 